So God's Forge is from Atlas Games. This is a game we got as a review copy, again, while at Origins. Uh, so th thank you for allowing us to cover this game. Uh, this is from Brendan Stern. And it is a two to four player game. It says it's ages 14 and up that plays in about 20 to 40 minutes. Now I do know I'll get to play this this upcoming weekend, or not a weekend, next middle of the week. Because uh, we have a game night coming up, and we made sure to add this to the slate of the game so we can get reviews done for it as fast as we can to kind of uh, show appreciation to uh, those who have given us games. So that's something you can look forward to as well. Uh, based on what I quickly read about this, it's there's simultaneous um, action selections, uh, some dice rolling, but also some player elimination going on as well. Uh, just kind of straightforward, the the art definitely stood out in that the contrast style that they used was a little bit different it, uh, with the kind of the whites and the grays and then just like the, just only picking a couple of colors to use and not using a wide spectrum of colors for the artwork it actually helps it stand out more. So let's uh, cut into this per se. Um, if I remember correctly, I was looking this up, and it may have, this game may have come out in 2019. So we'll see if it talks about inside the game when it came out at all. So I don't think this is brand new, but it's also not very old as well. So God's Forge. Uh, of course, we've got a rulebook right on top, as we would hope. Easy to find. Easy to check. Okay, I could probably pull this up a little bit so we can show off the full, full page of this. Give us something to set it on. There we go. Um, so first it talks about kind of a little intro to the game itself and the theming goes over component and showing them, which is nice. Uh, setup is right here. Now, because you have the reference of the component names set up so close together, you don't necessarily have to point out each thing in the setup, uh, especially since they show a very nice depiction of those components. You don't have to necessarily number, because uh, I know other games I've already talked about today, where having it numbered like one here and one in the picture is a ton of great help in setting it up. And then it goes over overview, the phases, uh, the cards, uh, what different icons mean, shows a full card on here pointing out the different things on it which is nice uh, talk about channeling elements now all of this text is very easy to read uh, both from a color standpoint and for the actual font used uh, it, it's not too small it, it's it's broken up in a decent way with bullet points instead of large chunks of paragraphs so learning this should be very straightforward and not super difficult uh, when trying to read the rules later. Uh, it looks like they've done a good balance of, of pictures and the words as well. So you're not, you don't have huge pages of just text. Uh, it kind of just kept talking about components and playing life and death and then it hits the credits down here. Uh, even talks about play testers. It looks like the, uh, they have the right, it's a 2018 Atlas Games All Rights Reserved. So at least the la when this game was released, the last time they had updated uh, the rights and the trademark stuff is was the, in 2018. So most likely that 2019 that I looked up sounds uh, sounds more correct based on what I remember. And then it looks like we have a little rules reference right here on the back of the book as well. So we've talked about that either having a very nice reference card or on the back of the rule book is always handy dandy. Okay, okay, so first look, decent insert right on top. Nice plastic formed insert, piece on top holding everything in and then potential spots for uh, components as we un as we get them out. Uh, this is a nice piece of uh, card cardboard stock. Uh, it's 
not the color contrast isn't the best straight up um legible of course but if you're not careful certain lighting angles it may be harder to read um because it's kind of that that goldish bronze color on black so it's made to for the light to hit and shine off of but it may be a little difficult depending on your lighting uh, setup so just bear that in mind when you go to play this game looks like we have uh, sets of dice uh, it looks like enough for the four players we have a teal a purple a kind of a, a yellowish green and a pink I'll throw those under the other camera for now while I pull everything else out. And then there's also a black die. That's probably kind of a joint one. Um, so they're, they're fairly nice to die. Um, a little bit small, but not tiny. Feels a little bit bigger than Sagrada size dice, um, but also not standard. I don't think they're 16 millimeter dice. They, they look a little bit smaller than a standard dice size. Rounded edges, uh, the color is, is nice in that it has a kind of almost a swirl uh, luminescence to it. So definitely enjoyable to, to look at. And then it looks like these uh, plastic scoring tokens of the same color. That would go around. It looks like there's a scoreboard around this, this circle on here that they would go on. And then I don't know if these are supposed to represent gold or gems or what, but kind of these very um, reflective gold uh, gem shaped, kind of that random cut style of plastic gems. Yeah, <laughs> dice, dice, paper, exactly. Uh, so we'll throw those in with the dice for now. Because everyone likes seeing shinies. And then we have a deck of cards. So I'm going to move the shinies and the dice to our other view. And then we can zoom in on these cards as we open them. Okay, uh, so first we've got this deck straight off we can see that it has that that gold peel line in the plastic should make it easy easier to open no knife needed which is always appreciated when uh, they get it manufactured and sealed this way as long as I can again use my nail to catch the edge of it cutting your nails right before you do an unboxing stream is not the most advised thing to do Okay, and we also have some reference cards to start the deck, which is very helpful. Uh, these appear to be double-sided, potentially the same, it looks like the same info on both sides, um, but very straightforward. Writing is a little small on parts of it, but with the amount of information they're trying to put on it, it's not bad. These are gloss finish so depending on your lighting it may reflect off that and be a little bit harder to read so now the back of the cards uh, kind of reminiscent of the dial uh, board itself um, very circular very, uh, the color seems very close to the same and it looks like there's a place on this board that all of these would sit like such and then there's a place for all these stones, so it looks like they're calling them uh, veal stones. Would go on that board as well. So let's see what kind of cards are in this deck. Um, we'll just kind of go through and look at the art in general. Again, granted, we don't know what they do yet, besides kind of attacking each other in different ways. We've got airships, uh, different symbols along the side and bottom, uh, probably different costs to use them, different abilities. Apoc Apocalypse Titan, Celestine Shield, a Chaos Ring. Now, if we played with Chris, he would definitely want to use that because he likes to cause chaos. Sapphire Drake, a Crystal Phoenix, 
Whoa. Call it a doppelganger. Almost look like they're multi well, uh, considering it's supposed to be kind of like a copycat multiple face type thing uh, based off the doppelganger name. Like I saw more of a face up here in some way before I saw the actual face down low. So very unique art. I'm liking it so far. The Emerald Trent, uh, of course, the walking tree style um, character. An Ethereum Cannon. It's in your face, kind of almost popping off the card with the 3D effect they've done with that. The Heart of the Forest. Jade Clover. Leviathan. Lightning Sword. Oh, and they actually has it as a sword, but it's jagged like lightning. That would be a dangerous sword to go against. The Malachite Manticore. Which there's a couple of. The Metallic Dragon. And a Mischievous Imp. The Mithril Armor. Uh, always important to have good armor. The Oaken Shield. Now where have we seen that before? The Onyx Vampire. Full Officer Stone. Now how many different references to different things do you think this game has? The Pyrite Golem, Scepter of Fortune, Shadow Gorgon, Spawn of Flame. Whoa. As you really look into this art, like you can see the face right there. But first, it does really look like just kind of flame spreading. The Regeneration Orb. Topaz Basilisk, the Veil Arp, Veilstone Beacon. Again, I think we all know what that's referencing. Volcanic Sphinx, a Wall of Stone, with a fun little face on it. Banish, Channel Veilstones, and again, Chain Lightning, Crystal Barriers. Dimension Door, Divine Wrath, Drain Life, Earthquake, Elemental Storm, Fireball, Nature's Revenge, Ruination, Shatter. So these seem more like spells than uh, the items that were the first cards we went over. Spellbind, Veilstone Thief, uh, Wheel or Woe, and then Winds of Fate is our last card. So the, the very geometric art style uh, is quite nice, actually, in my opinion. It's it's different than a lot of the art we've seen in the, some of the other games we've been opening and playing lately. So it helps it stand out. So um, based on what I've read, like when you're playing, uh, you end up rolling dice, uh, using the dice numbers to play certain cards. And then... You're essentially like attacking, I believe it's the player to your left. Let's see if I see it on the box. Because uh, it's simultaneous play, all players roll the dice, craft their spells, and launch their attacks at the same time. No downtime. Everyone's always playing. Uh, okay, so it didn't say specifically on the box because I was reading it online earlier. But yeah, you end up uh, setting up your spells and attacking uh, a person to in one direction but you kind of also have to watch your back because the person in the opposite direction is attacking you so you're kind of attacking in a circle at each other so you do have to bear in mind both attack and defense because uh, you can't be eliminated in this game but yeah that is god's forge so far from atlas games we said it was two to four players uh, 20 to 40 minutes approximately so we'll find out uh, how close to that playtime it plays because I will be playing uh, this coming week at my game night as we learn this game uh, to review it as well. So that'll be something to look forward to. And then because we have the components, now it does look like the box itself. Um, I'm not sure if cause those are... I guess you can put dice in these corners um, for the four players. I'm not sure. It's 
wholly necessary in the box itself like that. Um, I like the way it came. Dice in a bag, scoring tokens in a bag, and the shiny gold stones in a bag that fit uh, under this board because that's going to help with our shape test as well. And of course, putting dice right here in these corners would probably pass the shape test, no issue. Um, but no reason to tempt fate per se and not put things back in baggies when they're provided. So we're going to put it back in and do our shape test. And here we go. Set it on the table, it gets rolled a little bit, you know. You throw it into your trunk, whatever on the floor it may be, onto the table, kind of here, throw it across the table to someone else, whatever it is, carry it in your backpack. Turn it upside down, see what happens. Because I think the only potential is that the cards will have slid. Yep, that's what I thought. Now, not the worst, um, it kept them relatively contained. But because you're going to get sliding, you're going to get half your cards sliding into this other compartment. Um, so eventually I would probably put the cards in a Ziploc and potentially even throw them into this other main section 